all, welcome back to DBU. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. You'll recall in our last lecture, we covered grounding and I had to cut it short. And for those of you who have not seen the video on grounding yet, you definitely want to go see it first or you're going to get lost here. So how do we fix this then? Well, here's the answer. Ideally, you would have an isolated ground at each plug. They're usually orange or white with a green triangle at the bottom. Do not confuse this with a GFI or ground fault interrupter, which exists to protect an outlet from shocking the user. An IG is a circuit where the electrician runs a single set of wires from the outlet back to each breaker. I had an example of one on my last drawing, the aqua circuit. It was a solitary isolated ground. To do this though requires more wire, breakers, and more labor. It's nowhere near as efficient as daisy chaining, but for studios and hospitals it's a standard. Some higher end places might use balanced power, which is really cool, but far too complicated to dig into here. So are there ways to make home studios work using a daisy chain system? Yeah, it's possible. My room here is not on an IG, but when I designed it, I was very deliberate in circuit placement. Two circuits were dedicated just to audio, two for lighting and a couple for utility. To keep the room truly quiet, I had to be sure that only audio gear was dedicated to the audio outlets. I would be lying if I said I never cheated and plugged gear in the wrong circuits before, but to date I've been pretty lucky. Just remember that every little ground connection point, whether it's audio or electrical, it can tie you to another point that can be a source for noise. This is why grounding is so critical in studios. Moving on to RF and EMI interference. This is the result of magnetic energy or radio frequencies floating in the air, which our gear picks up. Because some manufacturers didn't do a good job shielding their gear, you'll find that sometimes it's not your wiring that's to blame, but the gear you're using. Occasionally bad components in the supply or audio path can be an issue too, but weak shielding is a real problem and very few manufacturers are open to constructive criticism about their gear. It always seems, however, that the pricier the unit, the better the gear performs when in untested places. On the subject of RF and EMI, after my house fire, I complained to the power company about a noisy transformer outside my studio. I was convinced it was inducing EMI into my studio because I always had noise in my microphones. They sent this really nice guy over who walked my neighborhood waving a strange device around our lawns. I didn't really get it at first and suggested that he go look at the transformer in my backyard rather than my front lawn. He gave me the device and told me to go stand next to my hose bib and report what number I read. It was pretty high, like maybe 118 or something. From there we walked around the house and measured different things. Appliances, computers, lighting, even the suspect transformer but nothing ever got over 45. I had asked the guy to explain to me what was going on and he said, your noise isn't coming from us, it's coming from your neighbors. It took me a second to think about that. I had wondered before if it was possible for my neighbors to backfeed crap into my ground plane. Now I knew they could. He wasn't waving his magic wand at my lawn, he was measuring the EMI coming into my water main. As a cheap solution, he suggested I cut out a six foot section of my city water feed and replace it with ABS plastic. Check this out. The minute we did, my noise was gone. Why did that work? Well, people have all this noisy electronic gear at home that feeds all sorts of crap back into the ground system. Since some areas require that the electrical panel chassis be tied to the water pipe coming from the city, it effectively connects every home in the neighborhood together via their plumbing. Pro studios don't have this issue because provisions were taken to isolate the studio's electrical feed during construction. Home studios aren't so lucky. Things like this end up being a big reason why home studios are plagued with noise problems. They weren't set up to be a studio to begin with. Good grounding takes up volumes of knowledge. I honestly can't even scratch the surface here. What the average audio user needs to understand is that good grounding is key 
to making quiet recordings. And a well-wired studio will pay for itself in fewer headaches later. This is all I have time for today. I encourage you to subscribe to my content and check back frequently for more stuff. Thank you for watching. Until next time, cheers.